the dark goddess Hecate. Who is the goddess Hecate? She is the crossroads. Entrance ways, night, light, magic, witchcraft, knowledge of herbs and poisonous plants, ghosts, necromancy and sorcery. She is a champion of witches and spiritualists. Her origins originated in ancient Greece around the 6th century BC, where she was known as the people's protector. Hecate is often depicted with dogs or godlike creatures. Hecate is considered a protector and guardian of the gateway between this world and the underworld. Dogs also are a symbol of guarding. Statues of dogs are often seen guarding doorways and gates. Both paintings and sculptures betray her with a dog by her side. Green witches, herbalists, doctors, and those who dabble in witchy concoctions can thank Hegate for this knowledge. It is said that she taught this art in both medicine, poison, and herbal treatments. Hecate is also known as having the ability to be both human and a deity. Being part of both realms, she is considered the gatekeeper between this world and the underworld. She can unlock the gates for you when it is time for you to pass through, yet she only allows those to pass if they are ready to do so. She is also considered a watcher to protect and keep those out but do not belong. Hecate is not only dark energy, but also the beauty of creation, birth and reproductive healing. She also is healing energy for dogs, doing a ritual in Hecate's name to heal a sick pup may lead to some miraculous results. Since Hecate is the goddess and guardian of witches, it is also good to have part of your altar dedicated to her. Hecate's energy is warm and inviting, it is healing, instructing, and a patron goddess of the witch. Now let's get a little more input from our resident witches. Hecate! One of our faves. The dark goddess (laughs) of the witches! Mm -hmm. Yes, so I feel that of all the dark goddesses, Hecate is the one that really speaks to the archetype of the witch. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. And it makes sense Mm -hmm. in terms of why a dark goddess would be associated with witchcraft Mm -hmm. because witches really do fall into that topic of the taboo. Mm -hmm. And we've spoken throughout the series of how the dark goddesses are the embodiment of yep. that which is more hidden, mm-hmm. the taboo, ranging from sexuality and desire mm-hmm. um, to um, death and yep. destruction, mm-hmm. but also hidden knowledge, the mysteries, yep. the occult, the yeah. occult, all of that um, falls under the umbrella of the dark goddess. Yes. And um, the witches. Mm-hmm. Witches yep. are, are, again, the taboo. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, what's been your experience with, with Hecate? Or so, Hecate, as some people yeah, pronounce it. Yeah, so Hecate was interesting. I remember years ago, I was having a reading done, and um, part of the reading was... Um, they were going to connect with your guides and I had never really, it was very new in my witchcraft journey and I was just curious and one of the first ones that this medium said is Hecate is, is one of your guides and I fully own, I didn't know much about her at the time and so, you know, went home, went down the Google rabbit hole and I was just <laughs> fascinated but what was interesting to me is I was in I was in my Saturn return and I was feeling very lost and I was having um, a lot of anxiety and uncertainty around big decisions that I had to make. I mean, I was at a crossroads and one of the first things that jumped Goddess out at me. Goddess of the crossroads. Exactly. And uh, the other thing that kind of made me laugh was um, one of her big symbols is the dog and she's very linked to, um, you know, dogs and and I've always felt very close with them and so at the time I was kind of like okay you know I'm at a crossroads and then I began to read about how she is very very linked with the ancient wisdom with witchcraft with magic and and ultimately because again with the dark goddesses very much a sense of empowerment and that was so wonderful for me to hear because I was feeling lost Looking back, I realized I was adopting a victim mentality. I felt trapped. And 
when I started to read up on Hecate and I found a meditation, it helped me realize that I'm on this journey and that I could call on her for guidance forward. She's not going to tell me what to do because, again, as none a, of them will. None of them will. <laughs> uh, I remember asking once and just the energy. Like, I was like, okay, I won't ask that again. And she just reminded me. She's like, you have all the power. I can show you resources I, you, know, that you have. I can be a mirror, but you have all the power. And it was just, she was the first dark goddess. Even before I discovered Lilith and my connection with Lilith, she was the first that kind of initiated me into the world of witchcraft and self-sovereignty. I think she is a great one to start with. Yes. To then open up to the other ones who yes. seem to have like more specific type of energies. Yes. Um, and it's interesting because Hecate, one of her symbols and offering you can leave if you create an altar for her is a key. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, yes. you know, the idea being that she can help you unlock doors mm -hmm. when you're trying to figure out which way to go. Right. Right. And uh, I find whenever I work with her, instead of saying, what should I do? Because again, that's a, a way of giving away our power. Mm -hmm. And I know you've talked about that in your manifestation series. But asking her to show us, show us the truth or show us, you know, I, I tend to ask her, is there anything that I'm not seeing clearly? And that just helps you know, give me more insight into situations. She is so wonderful for, especially new witches who are beginning the journey, because it is about the new witches who are ready. Ready, yes, for a yes. Powerful <laughs> energy, go on. Yes, the powerful energy. Because again, like the other dark goddesses, uh, it's very intense energy because she sees the potential and she expects us to to rise into that. And you know, part of that is. She is very good about helping us into that, you know, staying in our self agency as we're making the difficult journeys. Um, and also with creation, um, because I know she's traditionally she's linked to protecting women in childbirth. That's one form of creation. But any form of creation where we're taking something from the ether, from our own mind, and bringing it into the world. Right. Very valuable energy. Yes, and it's a it's a powerful energy. Most mm -hmm. people will know when she shows up yes. for them. <laughs> um, and often people will ask with Hecate or any dark goddess energy, "Am I doing it right? Mm -hmm. um, is is this a right offering, or am I asking the right question, or am I connecting in the right way?" And the great thing about working with dark goddesses is they are not meek. Right. So you will know. <laughs> you will know. <laughs> so, for example, if you put something on her altar that she does not like, mm -hmm. you will find it on the floor. Right. And that's a very clear message. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, which is, you know, a very um, straightforward way of getting the message, mm -hmm. being that you're ready to do the work. Yes. Um, if you're asking for guidance and you, say, make a decision not in your highest alignment, mm -hmm. she'll make sure it's shut down immediately. Right. And it may feel um, like we talked about with a Morgan it may mm -hmm. feel like oh that's a failure that didn't work out no that's Hecate guiding you yes um, and so that's something that that is really powerful with these dark goddesses is that mm -hmm. they're not going to be wishy-washy right right they're, they're not going to be wishy-washy they're not going to be subtle with um, with their energy or with mirroring what you need to, to realize within yourself and it's worth mentioning that because we talk about them as such these powerful, fierce beings, they are, they still have that nurturing yes. um, energy, especially Hecate. So Hecate, yes. way we can honor her because she looks after those who are less fortunate, yes. especially, you know, um, helping out, you had mentioned women and children, mm -hmm. um, those who are displaced, yes. those who are marginalized. Mm -hmm. She's actually a protector. She is. So, She's a very powerful protector. Um, I know in ancient times there would be offerings along roadsides and people who had nowhere else to sleep would sleep there because it was believed that her protection energy 
was more powerful. And uh, what you were saying about marginalized people, um, she she's very much a protector of feminine energy. And so um, any type of, you know, we have there's been occupations throughout history that are predominantly, um, you know, most of they're mostly occupied by women and they would call on her as a means of protection because maybe society didn't value that profession even though it was integral and so she would be there to be she's probably the most overtly nurturing they're all nurturing they absolutely are they all have that ability (laughs) yes they show it in different ways yes you're right (laughs) she's definitely overtly yeah she's probably the most you know appearing to be nurturing um, in the way that we recognize um, mm-hmm. and that we would find comfortable. And when you gain that connection with her and build that relationship, it's not going to be so startling an energy. Right, yes. You yes. know, mm-hmm. it will feel very calming. It will feel very yes. secure and cared for. Yes, yes. If you are showing up, you know, in your authentic self and you're just trying. I know when I was first beginning my witchcraft journey, I was worried that I was gonna mess something up and, and make them angry. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, I remember working with her and yes, it was very, um, I found you know, the, I had left offerings and there was one thing that I had just set on there and I'd forgotten about it. It was a used candle and um, it was just turned over on the altar Mm -hmm. um, because where I was at the time had carpet. And I remember thinking like, oh, that's nice of her because she could have dumped it on the carpet Ah. and it would have had wax to clean (laughs) out, you know. So it's it's a wonderful energy when you're ready to begin working with the dark goddesses because they're all intense. And they'll teach you um, how to respect the energies, right? Which in turn will help you to show up in a more um, respectful, integrity in your in your real life so Mm -hmm. that's important so yeah you know if you call out to one of these dark goddesses Mm -hmm. and you ask to work with them Mm -hmm. respect what you know they're asking you to do or leave an offering we never want to call upon energies and not leave them an offering to thank them Mm -hmm. Um, and that's all researchable of which which Mm -hmm. energies like what kind of offering right so those are things that we can empower ourselves to find out yes. but just understanding that that's something we need to do like for Hecate you can leave out dog biscuits mm-hmm. you can give money to um, a beggar at a crossroads mm-hmm. yep. um, you can leave some kind of offering of, of food or sustenance mm-hmm. at a crossroad yes Yes. Um, another thing I've, I've heard a lot of people do is they'll make donations either to um, like certain dog rescue organizations or certain shelters. And, um, you know, it's mainly, I, I, I had someone ask me one time because they were calling on uh, the goddess and they were concerned because they didn't have a whole lot to offer. And I was like, as long as what you're offering is authentic mm-hmm. and genuine, you know, it, it's not how much or how fancy it is it's just it's that authentic energy absolutely Um, yeah whether it's just you know a a milk bone yes a milk bone yes you know (laughs) leaving it out for a neighborhood dog or stray or something like that yeah yeah absolutely it's very Hecate is very much that energy of um remembering that we have our power and remembering that you know part of being sovereign is helping those who are less fortunate and it's not a condescending or patriarchal like oh i'm better than you i'm going to help you it is simply you know meeting the world as it is and leaving it in a better state than Mm. you found it campground rules yes exactly (laughs) you know the expression with great power comes great responsibility yes so you know Mm -hmm. as witches we need to be concerned about how our actions influence the world around us and as we become more powerful um doing it to be Mm self-serving where we are neglecting those around us Mm -hmm. um that can come back to bite us in the ass because (laughs) you know energetically we are all connected Mm -hmm. and again the dark goddesses are there to remind us of that not just to how to live fully in our power but how to responsibly wield that power yes yes and you know, along that vein, what I love about the energy of Hecate is, you know, 
when we look at who she protects and who she helps, um, even though dogs are kind of the official animal, she also does a lot with other, um, you know, other animal entities. And what it comes down to, whether it's animals or humans, is it's um, you know, beings that we share the earth with that don't have the power of voice mm -hmm. that we have. So it's again, it's, it's using our power as witches. It's a responsibility. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and creating that greater shift mm -hmm. you know, that, that we're in currently. I love that idea because I think as baby witches, mm -hmm. we, we learn as we go, right? right? And I think as a baby witch to maybe tap into one of these more um, fierce dark goddess energies could mm -hmm. be like a big learning lesson or it could be a lot to take on. Yes. So it needs to be um, something you're ready for. To yes. Diving into the shadows. Yes. <laughs> diving into the underworld. Yeah. Connecting with the taboo mm -hmm. in a, like a, a healthy, positive manner. This takes great maturity yes. and responsibility. And mm -hmm. so I think that yes. as witches, you know, no one owns the term witch. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. there's, you don't have to work with the dark goddess ever mm -hmm. and you can still be a witch. You mm -hmm. don't have to um, believe a certain dogma. You don't have to partake in any type of um, you don't have to ritual. Work black, even. <laughs> I know. <isn't> that... <laughs> I mean, it's preferred, but yeah. yeah. But you know, it's artificial color. <laughs> right. Um, but to me, a witch is less of just dogmatically following mm -hmm. expectation right and it more is a self-knowing mm -hmm. uh and a self-realization and through that finding your own personal power not being controlled and manipulated by the world around you but ultimately you being the one that mm -hmm. manifests the energy to create the world around you yes and it's not just and as you get more deep into your practice you realize you're not the only one on this planet right <laughs> <laughs> yes Yes, and, and I think too with Hecate being a guardian of the crossroads, I mean, crossroads are connections. And I think she's a great one, you know, for, for witches of all levels to work with, you know, again, when you're ready, because it's reminding us of our connections to others. The fate of others is the fate of us. It's kind of mm -hmm. like what we say, as within, so without, mm -hmm. as above, so below. and. She, even though she's very much in the shadows, you have to have the shadows to have the light. You have to have death to have rebirth. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have the duality, which is a huge aspect of feminine energy and the feminine cycles. Again, regardless of you know, we, regardless of our um, gender, we embody the feminine and the masculine energies, and we embody all of those cycles. And you know, Hecate is really incredible about just kind of the the interconnectedness of all of that and how you know if, if we're wanting to manifest something externally we have to do the work internally first mm -hmm. and we have to be comfortable with all of those energies within so we can navigate without absolutely mm -hmm. So working with Hecate, great to call upon when we're ready to go more deep into the shadows, mm -hmm. when we're ready to explore more sh types of shadow work that will ultimately allow us to live more empowered. Yes. Um, great to work with as we're trying to delve more deeply into our witchcraft practice, mm -hmm. maybe going from a more um, surface practice right. into wanting to learn the more um, entrenched wisdom and occult knowledge that goes along with that yeah you know things are occult things are hidden mm -hmm. because not everyone is ready for the responsibility yes. of that yes and that I love that you said that because I think that is the thing you know in society we tend to think occult is bad and we're not supposed to mess with it you know and really the reason why there's a seriousness to the occult studies is because of the responsibility that we have to take for ourselves and for our will. And, you know, Hecate, again, she's wonderful to work with, especially if you are facing a crossroads mm -hmm. in your life. And, you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you're not quite sure to go where to go, she's not going to make the decision for you, but she's going to help you bring you back to your intuitive voice and your inner knowing. And 
similar to the morgue and help to you know, ignite your courage mm -hmm. in moving forward. And then, oh, you know, along the lines of Lilith, help mm -hmm. us find that that power, that life force energy mm -hmm. in order to move forward. Yes. So they're all the dark goddesses are connected. Yes. Um, yes. And I think what we've kind of gleaned from this mm -hmm. this series so far is that um, there's power in the darkness. Yes, um, absolutely. Personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. But to be sovereign means mm -hmm. you can no longer be controlled and manipulated. Right. And as a witch, isn't that why we chose this path mm -hmm. anyway? Mm -hmm. But no one promised you it would be an easy path. No. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like you take that red pill, mm -hmm. and I believe you kind of take that red pill when you start working with the dark goddesses, and that you can't go back right. to unknowing. Right. You can't go back to way you were before being mm -hmm. kind of ignorant of this potential and yes. this energy and so you know be ready to take the red pill once you start <laughs> working with the dark goddesses because you won't be able to return to that state of ignorant bliss yes yes which is ultimately a good thing it's ultimately a good thing it's definitely the harder journey you know in our society we're conditioned to um you know again seek the external validation we're conditioned to look for the authority outside of us and you know this, and I think that's also again why a lot of these dark goddesses have gotten a bad reputation, and it's not because they're trying to lead us into something dangerous or bad, but they're saying you don't need to be looking externally. Right. You have the answers within, and you you have the power within. Um, you're not stuck in this situation you could start to, to and we've all been in those situations where i think too these dark goddesses remind us that anything that's worth having or creating takes time mm -hmm. and it's going to be on a cycle that maybe won't align with society you know we are a society obsessed with linear very fast hyper productivity and hecate as well as lilith and the morgan are big on their cycles. You have the rest period. Mm -hmm. You have a death period. You have a rebirth. Um, you have a growth period. And part of what I learned personally with Hecate was learning to trust my own cycles and realizing, okay, just because everyone else is in a huge growth or output period, if I'm truly not feeling that, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I can rest. And when I have inspiration, that's when I'm going to, to you know, follow my flow. That's um, the feminine, yeah. right? The mm -hmm. feminine is non-linear. Yes. It's cyclical, whereas the masculine is linear mm -hmm. and achievement-based. Right. And one is not greater than the other. Right. We need both. We definitely we need, need both. both. Um, but um, I love that you brought up the idea of um, the being shamed or the being yes. um, it being looked down upon the dark right. goddess energy right and I like that we talk about that in the episode with Lucifer mm -hmm. the idea of why certain things are stigmatized yes. in society mm -hmm. and spoiler if you haven't watched it yet <laughs> <laughs> it has a lot to do with control and manipulation yes, oh, yes. So um, I love the fact that we got to talk about these three goddesses mm -hmm. and talk about how working with them can really help awaken our power yes. and they're not something to be feared, but truly something mm -hmm. to respect yes. and honor and it's a blessing to be able to work with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hecate is such enticing energy. So much magic and so little time. Today I will share a story which may stay with you long after my final words. Allow me to bring to your ears the story of the box. The four amigos, Jan, Trevor, Karen and Ina, Friends since high school and still friends as they rounded the ripe age of their thirties. The carnival music was delightful. The night lights, colours, cotton candy and more fill their vision. It was the yearly Brighton Town Carnival with all the goodies. There were terrifying rides. 
the spooky house, sweets and foods that melt in your mouth, and so much more. Yet there was something new this year. A colourful tent stood among the food vendors and carnies. I wouldn't say it was large, just enough to hold a group of four or five. It was a fortune teller's tent. None of the group believed in any of that nonsense. As they passed, a lady in her late forties or so, dressed in a long colourful skirt and black blouse, beckoned for them to come closer. Trevor tried to get the group to press forward and ignore the woman. Still, Ina, being the more forward in personality, stopped and addressed the fortune teller. So, you want to tell us our fortunes? The fortune teller paused. Yes, my dear. If that is what you seek. Ina laughed. I think you seek my money and tell me things I probably already know about myself. She laughed once again once more. The fortune teller simply smiled. I don't want your money. What I need to tell you comes with no cost. Ina felt a con artist tactic coming on but decided to indulge the lady. Okay, lady, let's see what you have to say. Ina walked in as her friends followed her from behind. The fortune teller extended her arm across the entrance. You were not allowed. The words can only be stated in private. Now, Ina was even more amused, but played along anyway. Hey guys, wait for me here. I will be right back. Ina took a seat. The fortune teller extended her hands and placed Ina's into hers. She closed her eyes and began to speak. Ina was fascinated at how accurate the fortune teller was, but still not convinced. Anyone could guess some of those things. It was almost time for the carnival to close, and Ina thanked the fortune teller and began to get up to leave. Then she spotted a large painting hung from a tent wall. It was of a woman with two dogs at her feet. She looked powerful and a little scary. Uh, who is that? Ina asked. Ah, oh, you noticed Hecate. She is the goddess of witches. Ina looked confused. But you were a fortune teller, not a witch. The fortune teller laughed. Oh, you're all witches, my dear. With that, the fortune teller placed a small wooden box on the table. She had Ina look inside. Ina looked up, confused. It's empty. What are you showing me? The fortune teller smiled. There is powerful magic inside. So powerful that it will grant you almost anything you desire. The magic never runs out. Yet there is a condition. You must come back here once a year to visit me. The magic may start to take, then give if you fail to show. To accept my gift, Ina decided to humour the lady and accepted. By the time she finished up within the tent, the carnival was already closed. Karen was upset because she missed the last batch of cotton candy waiting for Ina. Trevor looked at the box in Ina's hands. What is that? Ina laughed. It is just an old magic box. I took it from the lady to humour her. I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Everyone had a good chuckle over the box. The next day, Ina woke up with a stomachache from all the carnival food she ate. She felt like she would vomit. She couldn't go to work feeling like this. I wish I didn't feel so terrible. She said out loud to herself. Just then, her stomach stopped aching and she felt fine. She thought nothing about it and just chalked it up to the food finally settling in her stomach. A few months, she started to have car troubles. She took her car into the dealership to have it worked on. She noticed a beautiful convertible Jaguar sitting in the showroom as she waited. Who would trade a car in like this for a Toyota? She'd said to herself. She must have said it a little too loud because a salesperson walked right up behind her. She's a beauty, isn't she? Ina laughed. Yeah, she is. What a dream to have such a vehicle. I wish I could afford it. I would take it off your hands today, she laughed again. The salesperson smiled. She is not for everyone, and walked away. The repair took much longer than estimated, and she walked over to see how things were coming along. The representative looked up with a long face, 
and before Ina could get a word out, he started to apologise. Ma'am, we ran into a problem and we were working on a solution with our sales department. We had your vehicle parked under a raised lift. For some unknown reason, the lift gave way and, well, unfortunately, ma'am, that lift weighed well over 10 tonnes and crushed your vehicle. Our sales manager would like to offer you any car you see on the car lot. Ina was floored. At first, she did not know what to say, but then found her words. Y you mean... I can have any car on your lot. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Any car on the lot? A huge smile spread across Ina's face. I will take the convertible Jaguar in your showroom. And with that, Ina became a believer in the magic box. For the rest of the year, she used the box sparingly for things she knew she could not obtain on her own. She even used some of the magic to help with health issues. October was rolling along, and the yearly carnival was approaching. Remembering what the fortune teller told her, she was planning to make a visit. Ina arrived at the carnival the first day without her friends. She purchased her ticket, made a beeline to where she last found the tent. Nothing was there. All the other food vendors and carnies were present, but not the tent. She became worried and found the carnival's main office and inquired about the fortune teller. The office manager had no idea what she was talking about. Ma'am, we never had a fortune teller at our carnival. They bring additional legal liabilities that our insurance does not cover. Ina became more persistent. That can't be right. I was here last year and was inside the fortune teller's tent. She told me my fortune. The manager frowned. Ma'am, I don't know what to tell you. We have never allowed fortune tellers onto our property, no way, no how. Ina left the office in a huff and decided to do her own searching around, yet no carny or food vendor remembers a tent or fortune teller ever being at the carnival. Ina left the carnival in a nervous haste. If she did not find the fortune teller soon, the box would begin to take from her. Perhaps she would continue to lose more and more until the magic consumed everything and anyone in her life. It started just as quickly as it began. The following week, Ina was in a car accident that totaled the Jaguar. Her house caught on fire. Trevor broke his leg. Her cat died. All this happened in just one week. After six months of more tragedy and loss, Ina was distraught. On her way to the corner market, she caught a small tent out of the corner of her eye. Could it be? Yes, it was the old fortune teller's tent. In haste, Ina walked across the street to an open dirt field where the tent was neatly propped up and awaiting patrons. She found the fortune teller sitting comfortably at her round wooden table inside. Hello, my dear, please come in. Ina entered the tent, sat down, and immediately began to cry. I came to the carnival just as you asked. I was there. Where were you? Everything that the box gifted me has been taken away. Everything! Everything! Where were you? The fortune teller looked directly into Ina's eyes. It was not time for us to meet. Ina was still in tears. I, I don't understand. The fortune teller looked at her with a sly smile. They never understand, she said in a dry tone. Your type only laughs and makes a joke of our magic and profession. It is respect that you lack. Remember the painting you saw on my wall? You failed to question how she protects witches. Let me tell you. She shows you what you could have, could want, could need, and then takes it away to punish you for doubting the magic. You've learned a lesson that will stay with you for the rest of your life. You learn respect for things you do not understand. With that, Ina was asked to leave. She walked across the street and looked back to where she saw no tent, only an empty space where the tent had been. After purchasing her groceries, she walked back to her home. It looked different. The damage from the fire was gone. In her garage was her old car, and the box was missing. It was then that she heard a mobile phone ring. It was Karen. Hey, are you set for tonight? I know, sounded confused. Tonight? Karen replied back. Yeah, remember, we're all going to the carnival. <laughs> Did you forget? 
Ina sounded even more confused. What carnival? It is the month of May. The carnival only comes in October. Karen paused for a moment. Ina? Are you okay? It is October. The carnival starts tonight. If you're not feeling well, I can tell the gang you'll be skipping this year. It was then that Ina glanced at her wall calendar. The date displayed was October. But it was over a year ago. She glanced at her phone and it matched what was on the calendar wall. But how could that be right? The date is May 12th, 2021, not October 21st, 2019. Karen, can you humour me for a moment? What is the year? Is it 2021? Karen's voice turned to concern. I know. Are you sure nothing is wrong? It is October 21st, 2019. Ina started to laugh. <laughs> yes, everything is just fine. I'll meet you guys there. After she got off the phone, she continued to laugh into hysterics. Of course, that all made sense, she thought to herself. The old car in the garage. No fire damaged her home, and I bet Trevor never broke his leg. It all never happened. Ina was elated. The fortune teller showed her a glimpse of her life based on the consequences of her actions. The year of using the magic box never happened. It was only a glimpse to teach a harsh lesson. A punishment from Hecate. That night, the fortune teller's tent was there at the carnival. Ina saw it and so did her friends. But she knew better. As her friends laughed at the fortune teller, Ina approached with a renewed sense of respect and appreciation. This time, as the fortune teller beckoned, Ina entered the tent without judgement, with eyes wide open humility and acceptance and so my witches if you can believe without seeing show respect without judgment then perhaps Hecate may bless you with her dark energy this has been a series of witches